Welcome to the final part of my Learn XML tutorial in which I will completely cover XML schemas and as well see how many times I can mispronounce schema. A XML schema is another way you can represent how an XML document file defines data, elements, and attributes. Unlike DTDs, which are great when you're mainly working with text elements, schemas work best when you're mainly working with data elements. Schemas also work better when you want to be certain that proper data is entered. Schemas define what type of data each element and attribute can hold. For example, with an XML schema, you can specify you only allow a price element to be of the form of a certain number of numbers followed by a decimal and then two additional digits. Also, schemas must be located in a completely separate file outside of the XML, unlike DTDs. In that separate file, it defines how the elements and attributes work together to define the class. Schemas use their own defined data types, which you can use as a base to create even more complicated data types. There currently are 47 data types available at this time. I'll list them here, but we'll only cover the most commonly used in detail. And no, I'm not going to read off this list. If you want to see them specifically, you could go to newthinktag.com, or you could pause the screen and look at them here. You could probably guess what most of them are used for. Here is a description for the most commonly used XML schema data types. Any URI. You store a URL in this type of data type. Date time. With this data type, you can define exactly how you want date and time to be represented. Decimal. A number that includes a decimal point. You can define the number of decimal places for it. Integer. Stores a number without a decimal point. String stores a collection of characters. Here are the different parts of a schema. The XML declaration tells the XML interpreter which version of XML and character encoding is being used. The schema element alerts the interpreter that this information is XML schema. The element declaration defines the element, you can see an example here, and the attribute declaration defines an attribute, and you can see how I'm defining an attribute here being at name and stating that it is a string. What you're doing with these two lines of code is saying that this document uses XML schema. XSD, by the way, stands for XML schema definition. And then in the rest of the schema, you now define the elements and attributes. You specify how these things work together, what elements contain other elements, and the attributes of each element. You must define all of your elements with an element declaration. The element declaration defines the element name and maybe its data type. There are two types of element declarations. The simple type definitions, these are elements that cannot contain any other elements and cannot include any attributes. Complex type definitions, on the other hand, declare elements that can contain other elements and can also take attributes. The following declaration defines an element that contains date information. Here is an example of a complex element being customer that contains an attribute being last name. Of course, you could define other attributes to this complex element. I'm just doing this just so you can sh shortly and quickly get the idea of what an element in XML schema looks like. The content model defines the type of content that can be contained in an element, and here they are. Text defines that the element can contain only text, and here's an example of a text model. Empty defines an element that can't contain text or elements. Mixed content models are models in which the element can contain child elements and text, and an element content model defines an element that contains other child elements, and here's an example here. You can see that I'm defining an element named first name as well as another element named last name. Pay specific attention to the definition I make here in the third line, meaning XSD followed by the word sequence. In the previous code, I used the XSD sequence element to surround the child elements. This will specify the order that the information is entered, being first name and then last name. This is referred to as a compositor element. There are three compositors available to you. Sequence. Use this to make sure all the child elements are entered in a specific order. Choice. This is kind of like a multiple choice answer. Use this if you want one of the child elements to be picked. And all indicates that any or all of the child elements may have data. An attribute of an element is declared with just a name and type like this. Here I'm defining an attribute with the name customer ID. And I'm stating that the value associated with this name customer ID must be a positive integer. You can assign a set of attributes to more than one element by creating an attribute group. 
This would allow you to use the group of attributes easily. You'll have to declare this group globally at the top of the schema file though. Here is how you would define an attribute group. You can see here I'm defining an attribute group with the name suffix and then stating that it would have these attributes assigned to it. White space in your XML file is normalized based on the value you declare. Here is an example of how you would declare how to handle white space. If you assign the value of preserved to your white space definition, you're stating that you want all white space to remain completely untouched. Here are the other possible values you could assign to white space. Replace forces all tabs, line feeds, and carriage returns to be replaced with simple spaces. Collapse, on the other hand, forces all tabs, lines, feeds, carriage returns, and spaces to be collapsed into just single spaces. You can create your own data types quite easily as well. Here's an example of how you could define a price data type. It would only allow for a maximum value of $999.99 because I maxed out the total digits at 5 and the total decimal places at 2, as you can see here in this example where I'm using an already defined data type being decimal and then stating the maximum number of digits at five and the maximum number of decimal places at two. If you want to leave notes that provide additional information on your file, annotations provide that capability. And here's an example here where I'm defining an annotation in which I am stating this is a list of customers and also stating that I'm using the language English. You can just think of this as a comment. Here we surround the comment with documentation tags, which are surrounded by annotation tags. So what's next? What else can I cover? You want more XML examples? I've covered HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL, PHP, object-oriented programming, and now XML. In the future, I plan on covering Ajax, Objective-C, iPhone development, Android development, spiders, RSS feeds, and pretty much anything else that comes up. If you want to see any other tutorials on any other web technologies, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.